Welcome to this next session on Marriage Matters. The topic today is marriage and communication. Communication is very important when it comes to any relationship, especially to marriage. I want to tell you a little story about a time of some miscommunication. A number of years ago, I had the opportunity to teach some adults in some higher education classes, and I got asked to do a course on communication. I went ahead and wrote up my own material. I thought I came up with some very profound and great ideas. In fact, I even had this amazing illustration in my mind. I drew it on the whiteboard behind me. It was a ladder. And each rung represented different elements of excellent communication. Well, after waxing eloquent for about 10 or 15 minutes, I asked the class, do you have any questions? Uh, to which the very first person with much hesitation put up their hand and asked me in broken English, what is a ladder? I learned very quickly that this class was actually designed to teach people how to communicate when English is their second language. I didn't communicate very well in that context. There was some miscommunication. But it gets far more serious than that when we don't communicate biblically to one another. There can be great problems. Now, when we talk about communication, communication is simply the imparting of information from one individual to another. It comes in both verbal and non-verbal forms. But as a Christian, we need to remember that the goal of communication, and specifically in the context of marriage, is to glorify God in what we communicate and provide good to our spouse. I think that definition is very important to be clear in our minds. But another important thing to remember is that the greatest communicator of all is God. He has communicated to us in the most beautiful of ways. There are two ways specifically God has communicated to us. He has communicated to us generally and then specifically. His general communication or revelation is seen in creation. It is seen in the sky, the sun, the moon and the stars. It is seen in the mountains and the trees. Here we have a general revelation of God's knowledge that God is and that he is powerful and he has created all things. But God has also chosen to communicate to us specifically. And that is seen by means of his son, Jesus Christ, and the scriptures. God is the most perfect communicator. He originated communication. He is the one who has eternally communicated. And of course, if we're going to learn how to be effective communicators, we need to know our Lord. But I want to zero in on this theme of communication and marriage. Another essential thing that I think we should remember before we look at our three principles today is when we communicate in our marriages, we need to recognize that in our marriage, a husband and wife are very different. God makes us all differently. The way I may process communication won't always be the same in which my wife would process information. And it is critical for both husband and wife to be aware of this. This will help create sensitivity in the way that we do communicate. Well, in the remaining time that we have, I wanna share with you three biblical principles that we would do well to remember when it comes to our communication in our marriages. These three principles are the following words. First of all, we're going to talk about humility, honesty, and holiness. Those three words must characterize our communication in our marriages. So let's first of all look at principle number one. God exalting communication in a marriage is humble communication. What do I mean by that? Well, both husbands and wives have to make it very clear to themselves that they are not Mr. and Mrs. Amazing. They are not the greatest individuals in the world. We can have an assessment of ourselves in which we think of ourselves higher than we ought to think. 
we need to remind ourselves biblically that we are sinners. We have fallen short of the glory of God. What we deserve is God's just fury. And the blessings that we now have as the people of God do not come from our own worth. They do not come from our own works. There is nothing that we have done to deserve the favor of God. The only reason we accept, receive the great blessings of God and the gift of salvation is because of God's sovereign grace and kindness to us in Jesus Christ. Our worth is found in Christ, and that is why we are acceptable before God. We will do very well to remind ourselves of these foundational truths, that we are sinners and we are saved by grace. That is very humbling, and it's true, and we need to remind ourselves of that. Quite often in our communication, we put ourselves forward as the expert. We put ourselves forward as the authority. We put ourselves forward as the one whose opinion matters the most. But humility must characterize our communication. And in our marriages, we need to remind ourselves constantly that we are sinful and we are what we are in our salvation by God's grace. So if our communication in our marriages is going to be Christ exalting, it needs to be humble communication. Secondly, our communication in our marriages needs to be honest communication. Over in Ephesians 4 and verse 25, we are told that we are not to speak falsehoods. We are to speak the truth to our neighbor. God is true. His word is truth. Our Lord Jesus even said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus hates lies. Our Lord hates deception. And if we are going to be godly communicators in our marriage, we need to be honest with our spouse. But we also need to remember that when we are honest, this needs to be coupled with love. Ephesians 4.25 says that we are to speak the truth, but over in Ephesians 4 and verse 15, we are told to speak the truth in love. That means that when we do speak honestly, we're not to lie, we're not to deceive, but that doesn't mean we are to be harsh. It doesn't mean that we are to be insensitive to the timing in which we speak that truth. To speak truth in love means that we are seeking the highest good of the other person. If I am going to speak honestly with my spouse, I need to seek her highest good. And that means I will be sensitive to the tone I use, even in what I would be saying is true. I need to be sensitive to the timing in which I would say this. If we are going to be Christ exalting in our communication, we need to be humble, but we also need to be honest. But that honesty will be coupled with sensitivity. It will be speaking the truth in love. And this now brings me to the third and final principle in Christ exalting communication in a marriage, and that is to communicate with holiness. Ephesians 4 and verse 29 says, let no corrupt word proceed from your mouth. We are not to be foul talkers. We are not to be perverse and perverted in our speech. Our words are to be words that reflect the holiness of our God. Our God is pure and he is separate from all evil. That means that we ought not to ever say demeaning things to our spouse. We ought not to say immoral things. We ought not to say anything that would not be considered holy. Now that is a sharp rebuke to many things that we are tempted to say or that we have said in the past. But this is what Christ exalting communication is. It is holy. It reflects the character of God. It is going to build up the other individual. It is going to be pleasing to our Lord. We are to be holy as he, our Lord God, is holy. 
So we are given the privilege of being communicators. After all, we are made in the image of God, and our God is the greatest communicator of all. The goal in our communication in our marriages is to glorify God and to provide good to our spouse. Whether our communication will be verbal or nonverbal, we need to know that our commitment is the same. And we will do well to remember the principles that we have discussed today. So let us summarize by re reiterating what these principles are. If we're going to have Christ-exalting communication in our marriages, it needs to be communication that is first, humble. Secondly, it is going to be honest. And finally, it is going to be holy.